Desert Wise is awareness of what the environment is that we live in, uh, what resources we have, what are available. Being Desert Wise has really grown into something that we finessed in the landscape and we choose the plants very carefully. Part of being Desert Wise is knowing what is compatible with our environment. When we acquired the property, our thought was in doing the landscape, take what we need and leave the rest. We try not to clear any of the native ground. We just wanted a small area that we could take care of, uses a lot less water. So the joy of the property is really that we look out and see the native lands that we love. The property that we live on is Joshua Tree Woodland. It includes, of course, Joshua trees, yuccas, creosote. We have a few juniper and a lot of wildlife. So we have birds, quail. We've seen bobcat a couple of times. It runs the gamut, but that's one of the joys of living here, that we're really close to the town, but we have our own native kind of surrounding. When we moved into the property, uh, I, I kind of knew what I wanted. It was just a small area that I really wanted to take care of, okay? It needed to be protected. This is all recycled fence boards that I found. The garden is very protected now, but last year, for some reason, rabbits and squirrels started biting and digging under the fence. So this year, before Scott began working on the garden, he rabbit-proofed everything. You know, pay attention and if they're getting in, find out where they're getting in and, and fill it in. Chicken wire, of course, rocks, can't get through rocks. Uh, on the wood fence, I took some tin, filled up all the holes. Though it looked like the garden would never come back, we were, this year, we were just so pleased to see that it did return and keeping the rabbits out allowed everything that was there came back and more. Getting into some of the plants in our garden, uh, Two of the mainstays, I would say, is called Savia and Desert Marigold. Those two, they produce tons of color all summer long. They take minimal water, and the best thing is they reseed themselves, and they transplant easy. So when a little volunteer pops up, I can move that anywhere in the garden that I want, and it turns into a beautiful plant and lots and lots of color. Then we've got the Santolina. Mm -hmm. Okay, that blooms. The only problem with the Santolina, it gets really big, but as it gets older, it literally splits in part. It, it, it's not a long-lived plant. Uh, rock Rose we have, which is a nice plant, but it only gives us about maybe 30 days of color with the blooms. I think the anchor in the garden is the desert willow that right now it's not blooming, but it has beautiful purple, pink blooms throughout the summer. Some of the bigger stuff, of course, is the mesquite. This one here that we're standing near probably have not watered this tree in a decade at least. Probably one of the, one of the toughest things of starting a garden in the desert is digging the hole for the plant. <laughs> that, yeah. The ground is hard. Obviously, the soil out here, I mean, I don't know if anybody really wants to work that hard with a shovel, so get yourself one of these. It's just called a digging bar. Bust up a little bit of that soil. Scoop the sand out. We've got our bucket of water. And let that sit. That'll soak in, goes down a couple inches. When you've dug that back down to the dry, get your bar, chip it out some more, and between the digging bar and a little bit of water, you'll get your holes, no problem. When I came up here, I was really amazed by the native beauty of our desert. I mean, for me, that's what I love, and I've learned to appreciate the little things, and I really love it about people that are coming to our desert, that they really do appreciate the native beauty. Instead of trying to put in lots of things that won't live, people are looking at, you know, look at the Joshua tree, look at the things that are blooming that really do have a beauty of their own. So for me, that's what I love about our bit of desert. Uh, there's just something special about the desert. It's a peaceful place to live.